Well, a hearty good evening to everyone and welcome to tonight's City of Sioux Falls City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, October 11th, and we're certainly pleased to have everybody here tonight. We want to start with uh, tonight's meeting with, of course, the roll call as we always do. Council members Jameson? Here. Karski? Here. Rolfing? Aguilar? Here. Anderson? Brown? Here. Entman? Erpenbach? Here. Well, we do have five city councilors here tonight. That is enough to conduct the city's business, and uh, we're certainly pleased by that. We want to start with an invocation, as we always do. We're fortunate enough to have Pastor Lance Wrench of Falls Church here in Sioux Falls. For those of you wondering where Falls Church is at, it's at uh, 4060 South Grange Avenue, uh, on around 229 in between Minnesota and Western Avenue. So we're certainly pleased to have you here, uh, uh, Pastor Wrench. After Pastor Wrench gives the invocation, please, if you'd remain standing, and then we'll uh, have our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Wrench, welcome. Let's pray. Father, we come in Jesus' name, and uh, thank you for tonight and the business at hand. Uh, your word is uh, true that says, uh, and unless the Lord builds a house, those that labor, labor in vain. And... Uh, these civil servants that are here before you. We know uh, the Bible says uh, you appoint all authority and you've placed uh, these servants here to make decisions and to consider uh, the business of the city and propositions. Uh, our prayer is that uh, the decisions that are made will, will continue to make uh, Sioux Falls and the community around us a great place to worship, a great place to raise a family a great place to build a, a career and uh, have uh, many great legacies and uh, of faith and a family and of history in this in this wonderful country we thank you for the freedom and, and ask for the wisdom of the holy spirit upon this meeting in jesus name amen amen, amen. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, let's continue with the meeting with tonight's consent agenda. Uh, Council, any changes to the consent agenda or motions? Move approval, Aguilar. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Aguilar has made a motion to approve tonight's uh, consent agenda, seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. Any uh, changes or comments? A roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Brown? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That has passed 5 to 0. Moving on to tonight's regular agenda. Council, any uh, changes to tonight's regular agenda? Move approval, Erpenbach. Second, Jameson. Councilor Box made a motion to approve tonight's regular agenda, seconded by Councilor Jameson. If there is no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Jameson? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Brown? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed five to zero. Thank you, Council. Always at the beginning of the meeting, we always start with an opportunity for the public uh, or the people of Sioux Falls to engage the Council. Certainly like to welcome all of you up uh, to the front. If there's a topic you want to discuss that's not on the agenda later on, please come forward now. Just state your name. And if you wouldn't mind leaving the comments to five minutes, the council would appreciate it. Ms. Colby, welcome. Mr. Mayor, councilors, and uh, Ms. Roust, where have I seen you before? <laughs> I'm here to... Uh, at least prove one physical Cole, would thing. Would you mind just introducing yourself? I know you, but would you introduce yourself My to the people of Sioux Falls? Robert Colby, a citizen of Sioux Falls, and I'm Thank here you. to, for several reasons. One of them is to show you a physical principle that happens that, uh, I don't know if it's one of Newton's laws, but two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time, and when you're working in your backyard, um, a tree branch and I prove that that's the case. Thus, <clears throat> I look the way I do this evening. Anyhow, be that as it is, we had recently, uh, with the mayor, was at the uh, rededication of the mausoleum for R.F. Pettigrew. As you have seen in the media, 
we are working as the Historical Society on construction of a uh, sculpture to honor Mr. Pettigrew. It seems that very few people are in this day and age are really cognizant of what he contributed to our community. Um, he helped save some of the downtown Sioux Falls area by a little shenanigan by coming in on the train from Brandon and convincing the engineer to unhook the train so he could come in and file on a piece of property that had a spurious nature to it so that the gentleman coming from another part of the country couldn't file on it and then ask the citizens who were occupying that land to pay up or get out. He did donate land to um, Luther Normal School. He did donate land Luther Normal School, if you aren't familiar, that's the predecessor to Augustana. They came to town about 1918. Uh, he did uh, contribute land to the uh, Woodlawn. And <clears throat> he lost a fortune when he built the new Chicago southwest corner of Sioux Falls. That would be north of the 41st Street and just west of the river on the 41st Street Bridge. He had a packing plant, he had a tannery, he had a wool processing plant, he had a, a, about five or six different buildings that were going to be the new Chicago. Push comes to shove. It started operation, then the Depression of 1893 hit, and he lost a fortune. He did help out City of Sioux Falls in spite of that in 1893 by, because he was in the Senate getting a post office building to be constructed in Sioux Falls, just up the street here. It is now known as the Federal Building. That gave a shot in the arm to the community because it helped the quarry industry, and there were a lot of people working at you know, fixing up the streets and doing interior finish work and all that sort of thing, considering that in 1893 the population of Sioux Falls was probably in the eight to 10,000 people at the most. This was something that really spurred the economy. Thus the reason for doing something with the sculpture. This is kind of a payback, not a pay it forward, but pay it back. Today in our political system, we have a lot of people who are asking for money to get elected and promising the moon Two cars in every garage, a chicken in every pot, and everything else. But here's a person who actually did things for the community and we feel needs to be recognized for that. Now, we don't recognize a lot of the Native American people prior to this. We don't have their history. But we do try to take care of the people who have done things in the past that have made our city great and our community. Most of us here will never have anything in the line of a sculpture dedicated in our name unless we come up with enough money and pay for it ourselves. Thus, I hope that when this sculpture is finally set north of the arches on Phillips Avenue, that this will be a piece of pride for the community. Which leans, lends me to something else. We had another monument that was dedicated by the city mothers and fathers back in 1949 on a major thoroughfare Highway 77, top of the Cliff Avenue Hill, and it has been relegated to obscurity by virtue of the realignment of the streets there. And if anyone is looking for it, and I've had one person said, well, I found it, but I was lost, and I was looking on uh, how to get to the restore for uh, uh, hum uh, Habitat for Humanity, and that was the only way that they found it. I would suggest that the city might consider putting a parking on Amadon Avenue and the County Historical Society has an easement, an electric easement going from Amadon Avenue down to the sculpture. It would be a short little gentle walk down there and it might actually make that a viable memorial to the pioneers of our community. This was constructed by the Historical Society with the sanction from the City Mothers and Fathers in 1949, and it was a grand memorial at that time. And in the course of one lifetime, we relegated it to absolute obscurity. I don't know of anyone who can give you directions on how to get there other than say it's at the top of the hill and find it. I would also make a suggestion that you might, just because you are in the city, uh, making decisions that you might look at a little book put out by Reuben Bragstead 
Sioux Falls in retrospect. This is about the infrastructure of our community. It was written in 1967, but it gives you some idea of how our city was put together, streets, sewers, etc. It isn't complicated, but it does give you some idea that we have not always been a green community. And it took a lot of effort on a and some lawsuits in order to get the city off the diamond actually do something with the uh, sewer in our community. We didn't start till 1893 and we didn't have wastewater treatment till the mid 20s. But be that as it is, we are trying to promote RF Pettigrew by a sculpture that people will look at and be able to say with pride that here was a person who contributed to our community and helped make it what it was and what it is and what it continues to be. It's just too bad that we take the other people, the no-names, the, the nothings of our community, who were the pioneers for which the Pioneer Monument was constructed, and we take that monument and relegate it to obscurity. Thank you for your ears. Ms. Colby, thank you. Folks, anybody else who wants to speak to the council? Mr. Tango, welcome. Welcome, Ms. Stanga. Okay, Ms. Stanga. Just want to let you guys know I went to the concert on Friday. Great concert. Well, what disappointed me was uh, to find out that it wasn't sold out. Uh, at the 4 o'clock meeting, I sat and talked to Terry, and uh, it just happened to be where we had a day open at the arena, and they filled the date with the concert. He said it wasn't expected that it would sell out, but it was a day that the arena was going to be used. But I guess as a taxpayer, trying to see that the facility wasn't sold out is sort of disappointing. Because if you're going to try to get an event center to have a lot more seating, we have, if, if, if that does happen, we're going to find out how we can fill that facility because right now it wasn't full. But the disappointing thing was is he went in and it was $7 for a chicken strip basket, five fifty for a pork sandwich. That's something that people can't afford. And if, if this is gonna be done, it's gotta be made affordable for everybody. My neighbor again, uh, live on $20 for the rest of the month. They gotta ask for food. They gotta ask for help. They don't want to. People ask me if the city, if the council or the mayor goes to the fairgrounds when I ask them to, I couldn't tell you if they do or not. People are struggling. People are losing their jobs. People are uh, getting docked in their pay. I even had a police officer address to me that uh, maybe the city should realize that uh, We've taken a pay rate, a pay freeze, and they say that times are tough, but we're looking at this event center. Sometimes you wonder where we're sitting at in the city. Um, you know, I guess uh, you know when we compare apples to oranges, a lot of the facilities that we we're being compared to had major contributors. And we don't have that. And uh, until that comes out, you know, I think people are going to be very skeptical on bringing this to a, a yes vote. And I think that somebody has to come out majorly and say that, hey, this is what I'm going to do to make this go. So thanks. Mr. Singer, thank you very much. Folks, anybody else who wants to speak to the council? Well, very good. Thank you very much for those comments. We do appreciate it. We'll move on to item number three. Item number three is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the release of permanent easements in a portion of Lot 3A except Tract 1 contained therein, Block 1 of Williams addition to the City of Sioux Falls, Minnehaha County, South Dakota, and a portion of the Northwest 1 4th of the Northeast 1 4th of Section 32 T101NR 49W of the 5th PM, Minnehaha County, South Dakota. Hi, Chad. Good evening, Chad Heavey with the Engineering Division of Public Works. This permanent utility easement is south of 41st Street 
and east of Grange Avenue. It was granted by Platts in December of 1999 and in February of 2001. There are no utilities in this easement. If released, the easement area will be used for future development and engineering recommends approval. Jan, thank you. Folks, this is a second reading, so you actually do have the opportunity to engage the council if you're interested. Anybody want to chat on this? Very good, council. Any thoughts? Move for approval, Anderson. Second, Aguilar. Councilor Anderson's made a motion to approve uh, this item, seconded by Councilor Aguilar. Uh, any further questions or comments? A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That has passed 7 to 0. Item 4. Item 4 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, providing appropriations and the means of financing for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2012. Mayor and Council, Tracy Turback with the Finance Office. This is the second reading of the 2012 City Budget Ordinance. Uh, I would point out that the amendments that the Council approved uh, in September are reflected in the ordinance uh, in front of you, so no further amendment is needed. I stand ready for any questions. Director Turback, thank you. Uh, citizens of Sioux Falls, any, any comments on this? Very good. Uh, Council? Move approval, Aguilar. Second, Entman. Councilor Aguilar has made a motion to approve uh, item number four, seconded by Councilor Entman. Uh, any further discussion or comments? A roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. That is passed seven to zero. Item five. Item 5 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by amending certain animal control and licensing ordinances of the city. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Alicia Kalora, Assistant Director of Public Health. I'm here because the last few weeks we've been providing some information on a recently passed rabies resolution allowing for one year and three year um, booster intervals for rabies vaccine in dogs and cats. The health department would like to support revisions to the animal control ordinance um, to complement these changes and they are in sections 760 and 762 allowing for one and three year pet licenses and also a corresponding fee schedule. So for instance, a cat would be allowed a one or a three year license. The fees would be $5 for one year and $15 for three years. The health department feels the benefits to this vaccine and licensing structure are threefold. To allow the vets and the pet owners to choose the appropriate vaccines, to increase owner compliance by having flexible, synchronous, and convenient vaccine and licensing schedules, and also to maintain best practices for rabies prevention and control as recommended by the CDC. At this time, I will also introduce Sergeant Kyle Hoekstra, who has a few more um, revisions to propose to the council this evening. Uh, Kyle Hoekstra, Sergeant with the Police Department. I'll just go through the uh, ordinances uh, that we're looking at changing in conjunction with uh, what Alicia just talked about. Uh, 723, uh, just removing the ordinance itself. It's not been anything that's been uh, uh, followed for uh, many years. 7-24, uh, uh, basically this is the ordinance. We're just looking for some wording changes that we would have the ability if an animal is current on its rabies uh, vaccinations, that animal control would be able to do a home quarantine uh, that would uh, potentially save a dog or a, a, a cat owner uh, $110 with the impound fee and, and that sort of thing with the, the quarantine. 7-45, uh, this is just adding the wording of $8 per day and this uh, came out of uh, an audit with the police department. They wanted that wording in there. 7-52, uh, just adding the language of suffering uh, and otherwise diseased uh, to the injured. And that would just allow that in situations where an animal is suffering that isn't injured, uh, they would have the ability uh, to take that uh, animal to the emergency vet and uh, potentially euthanize it if it is uh, suffering. Uh, 760, 61, 62 all uh, basically deal with the uh, rabies uh, ordinance and also licensing. And then uh, 23, 26 also uh, this came about from the audit 
that they would like uh, some more of that wording in there for animal licensing. Thank you very much. Alicia, any other comments? No, not very good. Uh, folks, again, this is a second reading. Any comments from anybody in the audience? Very good. Council, any questions, comments, motions? Move to approve Karski. Second Entman. Councilor Karski has made a motion to approve this item, seconded by Councilor Entman. Uh, any further questions, comments? A roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 6. Item 6 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by amending Article 8, Main Street Business Improvement <coughs> District of Chapter 39 by clarifying exemptions subject to annual special assessments. Good evening. Uh, Darren Smith, Director of Community Development and Public Parking. Uh, the ordinance uh, you have in front of you amends the existing uh, Main Street or Downtown Business Improvement District, which has been in effect since 1989. Um, again, in front of you is uh, uh, the product or result of a multiple month effort working with the Downtown Bid Board, various attorneys representing different parties, Downtown Sioux Falls representatives, as well as our staff. Um, a broader review will continue going forward. However, we need to bring tonight's proposed changes to you at this time because the 2011 assessment role uh, for this business improvement district will be coming to you on November 21st of this year for your approval. The proposed changes consist of several minor language changes and one key change on the third page in section 39-147 of the ordinance where we spell out more specifically the exemption for residentially zoned properties. Uh, in a preliminary review of how this would impact the current assessment role that would be coming to you in November, uh, it appears approximately 13 properties would be exempted, uh, 13 additional properties would be exempted going forward. Thank you, Director Smith. Uh, any comments from the audience? Very good. Council? Councilor Anderson, Jr. A couple questions, Darren. <clears throat> Thank you for working on this ordinance and making some changes that I think were uh, greatly needed. Um, now, I guess my question will be, businesses are able to participate and make their own decisions inside these bid districts also, or how well, is that gonna work now? The broader review going forward uh, will include, again, getting past some of these uh, changes that we felt were, were necessary, their improvements um, immediately. We do want to take a broader look that will include meeting with the bid board members um, who do represent uh, all the, the, uh, those who would be assessed downtown. Um, downtown Sioux Falls staff, we will work and invite, work with and invite um, businesses downtown to be a part of those meetings and get a good variety of opinions and perspectives. Uh, so yes, we feel it'll be a very open and transparent process going forward and try to really strengthen uh, support for the bid downtown wide. And you said that in the next coming weeks that we're going to be looking at the actual assessment percentages now or? That'll be the assessment role for 2011 and that will be coming to you um, on November 21st. Uh, if, this, uh, if these changes are adopted tonight, this ordinance with these changes would be in effect when that assessment roll comes to you. So those 13 uh, properties, give or take, uh, would be exempt and you will not see them on uh, the assessment roll that you get. One last question. Please. And then uh, is the assessment formula, is that going to be changed or is it going to stay the same as it is now? What you have in front of you tonight leaves it the same. Um, I don't know, that along with everything else will be part of the, bro of the broader review. Uh, I don't know that we've had um, a lot of complaints necessarily about that formula, but uh, we're gonna look at everything going forward. Thank you. Good job, Councilor Anderson. Councilor Antoine. Darren, that review that you're doing, is that going to be over how long of a period of time, between now and this time next year, yes. or what? Yep. Uh, I think it's our hope it wouldn't take that long, but uh, uh, 
it is a complicated process. There's a lot of different opinions and perspectives related to this. I do believe there's broad support uh, for uh, the Main Street slash Downtown Business Improvement District, but it needs to, uh, we need to comply with uh, uh, the state statutes that allow for uh, these business improvement districts. Uh, certainly we want to comply with the intent uh, and the spirit of those and we'd like to strengthen that support and have the most fair business improvement district assessment possible. Okay, thank you. Councilor Mark. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate you, you guys taking a look at this. Um, mm -hmm. Previously, you explained to us that the changes that we're making tonight are basically based on zoning, so that if Correct. it's a residential, it's, it's zoned residential and people live there, it's their homes, it's gonna be exempt. Um, but if it's zoned commercial, but people still live there, like it's certain apartment buildings or the lofts and those kinds of things, they're still going to be in it. Correct. But we know that there are some businesses that don't believe that they either fit mm -hmm. or that they benefit. How, what's their process if they, they really do believe that? What, how can they take that case to someone to appeal that? Yeah, very good. Um, well, I do think the, the changes you have in front of you tonight will go a long ways in helping that, not only immediately but long term, being much more specific about that residential zoning. Um, however, there is still an element of subjectivity involved in this. For example, item number two in uh, section 39-147, the industrial property, that doesn't say industrial zoning, it says industrial property. So it does give us uh, an element of subjectivity that as a staff, uh, and then of course with city council approval, we can, we can apply as fairly as possible. Now, this review going forward is going to be very open. Um, it'll be very open, uh, open to the public, open to downtown Sioux Falls businesses and others to come in and uh, give their opinion. But then even beyond that, as a staff, we plan to look at every single business downtown that would potentially be eligible for this assessment. Um, they would have the opportunity after a letter is sent out to talk with us personally going forward about that. Uh, and I believe we'll be, we'll be as fair as possible. And if they still don't feel like they've uh, uh, been heard, ultimately they could, they could come to this, this venue uh, before the city council would approve it, the assessment rule. Good. Thank you. Darren, just as a follow-up, and I apologize, just for the public's sake, so a, a business, they could come to the council and mm -hmm. opt out it, or try to opt out of that, yes. and then the council would have the ability to... They could to ask the council to amend them very good. out of the assessment role. Okay, very good. Thank you. Councilor Aguilar, thanks for letting me do that. Appreciate it. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, Council? Mayor? Yes, uh, Councilor Anderson. Please. I just have one comment on this. Um, Darren, thank you. You and I had a great conversation yesterday about this. And this actually allows this whole process to be more interactive with these property owners and businesses. I feel that you know, the, the old process was um, almost strong-armed where we expanded our downtown district and businesses really did not have a choice. They were in it, and that was the only thing that they were given, and they weren't given any type of options. So I'm glad to see that these changes make this a more open process and that those property and business owners will have a larger say in their business district. And I would With move to... Uh, <clears throat> Move to approve. Thank you, Councilor Anderson, Jr. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Anderson, Jr. has made that motion to approve item number six, seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. If there's no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. And then it's passed seven to zero. Item seven. Item seven is a first reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by adopting the 2011 National Electrical Code and amendments thereto. Welcome. Good evening, Ron Bell with uh, Building Services representing the Electrical Inspection Division. Um, what you have in front of you is a first reading to adopt the 2011 edition of the National Electrical Code. Um, to give just a little background that the National Fire Protection Association published the NEC, the latest edition, 2011, January 1st. The South Dakota State Electrical Commission held public hearings between January and July 
in March 5th, um, our five electrical inspectors with some of the state electrical inspectors put on an IAEI or International Association of Electrical Inspectors code classes to 90 different um, uh, electricians, journeymen, um, apprentices, and so forth of those code changes. What happened in July 1st, the State Electrical Commission actually adopted the 2011 NEC. And with, with, that, with that final document, we have modified our ordinance through August. In August 1st, uh, we published a draft of what our ordinance is, which really matches everything at the state, plus a few other local amendments that we, that we do. That's been on our website since August 1st. In the meantime, we've had two Board of Appeals hearings on that. We met with the Home Builders Association, and uh, we also had a public hearing with uh, electrical inspectors. Not a whole lot of people showed up for that, but uh, we nevertheless had our public hearing. So with that, uh, it's going to be first reading. Um, you have what the significant changes are, and also a copy of every one of the changes with a commentary, which is um, posted on our website. As far as administratively, we're looking at two items, and that is a moderate increase in electrical fees that would be effective for January 1st of 2013. And also, we are proposing to require a bond uh, from electrical contractors. Of all the licenses that we have, uh, uh, Class B electricians and electrical contractors are not bonded with the city because the state has that bonding authority as far as compliance. But the state has refused us to be able to access that bond for an electrician that would go out of business or leave town without paying fees. So it's really, that bond is protecting not only the consumer that it's supposed to do, it'll also protect the city to be able to collect fees whenever that's necessary. So with that, any questions? Good job, Ron. Uh, folks, this is a first reading, so you don't have the opportunity to, uh, to engage the council now, but second reading you would. Councilor Erdenbach? Or Councilor uh, Aguilar, my apologies. Does the bond also go in effect in 2013, or when does that? That would be January 1st of 2012. Of 2012, yeah. thank you. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Ron, when you had your meetings with the electrical contractors, were there any concerns brought up about any changes? Oh, there was questions on the bonding, and um, there was also some technical questions. You'll see a top 12 list of some of the modifications but most of those have already been um, taken care of, especially since the State Electrical Commission has required this since July 1st. Thank you. Council, would anybody like to set a date of hearing and second reading for Monday, October 17th, for item number seven? So moved, Antiman. Second, Anderson. Councilor Anderman's made that motion, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. Uh, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Council members Erpenbach? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 8. Item 8 is a first reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending Appendix F of the Code of Ordinances of said city by rezoning property at north 330 feet of west 660 feet of northwest quarter, southwest quarter, NW 14th, SW 14th of Section 12, Township 100 North, Range 51 West, Lincoln County, South Dakota, from the A1 Agricultural District to the SNJ Plan Development District. The Planning Commission recommends denial. Good evening, Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an item that's going to be considered by not only the Sioux Falls City Council, but also the Lincoln County Commission. Uh, for people that are not aware, we have a joint zoning jurisdictional agreement with both Lincoln County and Minneapolis County. Uh, this particular property is located on the east side of the T. Ellis Road, just south of West 57th Street. Uh, obviously, it is not in the Sioux Falls city limits, but is, it is directly to the, adjacent to the Sioux Falls city limits along the east property line. The petitioner's name is Thad Shetnan, and the property in question is approximately five acres in size that's currently zoned agricultural. Uh, there is a residence on the property, but the majority of it is undeveloped. Uh, Mr. Mr. Th Shetnan is proposing to rezone this five acres in order to allow a business to be operated that would involve storage, a commercial storage facility. And for those of you that remember, early last year we went through a similar, very long joint meeting down in the, the Canton County Courthouse on a similar request, which is directly to
to the south of this particular parcel of land. Uh, in the application, the petitioner has, has stated that there will be a variety of storage, uh, types of storage allowed. And within this plan development zoning as proposed, there would also be some limitations. And I'm going to just quickly go through those under the other regulations. The petitioner has stated that um, after October 31st of 2016, that there would no longer be any outside storage on the premise. Um, the types of storage that would be allowed would include licensed cars and trucks, trailers, boats, campers, RVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles, personal watercraft, and all-terrain vehicles. Uh, there's also proposed to be landscaping and fence screen around the perimeter of the property. Again, the property fronts on the TLS Road along the east property line is the backyards of existing single family residences that are in the Sioux Falls city limits. To the south is an existing storage facility. During the joint planning commission meeting, there were some neighbors uh, primarily that live in the Sioux Falls city limits that were concerned about the outside storage. Uh, Mr. Shetland, Shetnan has proposed a phasing plan uh, that would begin along the west frontage with the indoor storage. And then over a time period, the outside storage would eventually be uh, replaced with additional buildings, uh, resulting in eventually that it would all be indoors. And so that phasing plan again relates to the 2016 timeline as proposed where there would no longer be any outside storage. In our long range comprehensive plan, we do show this area as future residential. So from the city's perspective, we were kind of in a, um, a dilemma as far as do we support this economic development because there has not been any residential uh, activity along this corridor. Uh, is that a reasonable use of the property? But again, uh, the Planning Commission for the city has recommended denial primarily because of the adjacent residential concerns. The Lincoln County Planning Commission did uh, recommend approval by a split vote of four to three. So that's kind of what we'll be discussing uh, at the joint meeting. So that's kind of the background. And I know that the, the petitioner will most likely be at the joint meeting. The joint meeting will be here in this building at the date that has been recommended for the second reading. So I think my five minutes are up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Okay. Appreciate it. Folks, again, the first reading. So, uh, Council, any questions? Uh, yes, Councilor Bach. Mike, can you go back to the slide that shows it in relation to the rest of the world? Then where is the one that we talked about last year? Directly to the south of this. Directly sheet. to the south. Yes. So the one with the big white building on yep. it. Yep. That's the one that we talked about the type of fencing and mm -hmm. the type of storage. So that has been in operation for, for a few months. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Thanks, Mike, for the presentation. I guess my questions are coming along. Uh, this is the on the east side of the T. Ellis Road. Yes. And basically, as we take a look at transportation issues in this area, that T. Ellis Road is being looked at as uh, where highway, I think it's Highway 100. Um, might be placed as we come back around. We've talked about, referred to it as the west side corridor. The west side kind of the corridor. Concept, yes. So we're looking at maybe like a five lane highway there. Yes. And, and we're going to say the east side of that is going to be residential off of that highway. That's kind of the, the quandary as far as what is the appropriate land use along a major corridor like this. And the way, it, the way to be honest, the way it is developing, that that residential probably is not likely thinking, to happen it's going to be more commercial yep. than so anything then, over there so then we start talking about in our world the transitions between one land use to another and how do you make that transition work and are that's we, how we got into the big discussion last time about 
the type of fencing and the type of landscaping and setbacks and setbacks things like and that to, things, to yeah. make some type of buffer between right. that and the residential area in that area because when these um, when the people that currently live to the east when they bought their houses of course they were looking at long term there might be more residential behind them in the future so I I guess my guess here is we're going to see a lot more of this coming around where these property owners are going to want to, I, I, I just don't see a residential use along that corridor. And I, I would say that we're probably going to see more property owners come with us with commercial or business ideals, you know, for those properties. Yeah, the, the, the I'll call it the depth of the land or the, the amount of land from the Teos Road back to the existing residential is is pretty extensive so in theory there could be commercial development along the frontage with other residential behind it what groups are looking at the development in that area at this time is there a committee that's actually looking at that or? not that i'm aware of I mean, not that I'm some aware of. joint between minnea county and lincoln county in the city not that i'm aware of okay thank you <clears throat> councillor karski I think you had a picture that zoomed out a little bit further than this, wasn't there? Yes, there you okay. go. Okay, Okay. here's Sundowner, okay. So the star is the proposed storage yard, and then all the area that's shown in color is, represents the current city urban hmm. area. Okay, now you re we referenced the west side corridor. I was understanding that was going to be a, another half a mile west of the T. Ellis but Road. we are looking at options out there <clears throat> we are looking at what will happen to the T. Ellis Road because yeah right now I mean if you go north of um, 57th Street on the T. Ellis Road that's that's almost all residential to the east of the T. Ellis the Road all the way up to 12th Street so this is half a block south of there or a block and a half south of there so I, you know I'm I'm kind of concerned that it might be too it might be too close to a residential area. Other question I have, I guess, is um, if we approve the first reading tonight, when is the joint meeting on the with the county, and when how is that resolved? Can you fill me in on that process? Yeah, the, the proposed public hearing and second reading would be Monday evening, October 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. here at the Carnegie Town Hall with the county yes the county commission would okay. be sitting with you to vote on this second reading okay and, okay and the way our joint zoning works is that it takes an affirmative vote of both bodies to pass an item okay one more councilor anderson here um it's not so much just this item here but i i guess what i would like to see out of this if possible is this brought to either UDC or CCOG, where you have that intergovernmental committee to take a look at this, to see that see, look at this type of development along that corridor? Because whether we do it a half mile to the west, that western transportation corridor, or we use the T. Ellis Road, that area is still going to be impacted. And I, I think what we would like to do at the second reading is maybe give you a little more of the planning background for this area that would help. Yeah. Okay. Council, you know, would anybody like to set a date of hearing and second reading from Monday, October 24th, 7 p.m. Uh, with the Joint City Council of Lincoln County and the City Council at Carnegie Town Hall? For so, mo okay. so moved, Aguilar. Second, Anderson. Councilor Aguilar has made that motion, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. No further discussion. Roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? No. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed six to one. Item nine. Item nine is a resolution vacating the public right of way on West Unity Lane from South Grange Avenue to West Village Drive and West Village Drive from South Grange Avenue to West Unity Lane and West Village Circle from West Village Drive to the end of the cul-de-sac. Good evening, Chad Heavey with the Engineering Division of Public Works. This item is also associated with item three that was uh, approved earlier tonight. 
This unimproved right-of-way is south of 41st Street and east of Grange Avenue. If vacated, a utility easement will not be maintained. If vacated, the right-of-way will be used for future development in this area. Uh, the petitioner has complied with our street vacation policy, and engineering recommends approval. Thanks, Chad. Is anyone in the audience who want to speak to this item? Council? Move to approve. Brown. Second, Entman. Councilor Brown, thank you. And Councilor Entman, thank you. There's been a motion to approve and seconded. Item number nine. Uh, all those in favor. Let's have a roll call vote, please. Sorry. Councilmember Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Item 10. Item 10 is a resolution vacating the public right of way on North. North Drive adjacent to Lot 6, Block 2, Sioux Empire Development Park, 3 East Edition, as shown on Exhibit A. This unapproved right-of-way is at the end of North Drive, uh, just south of Amadon Street and west of Cliff Avenue. Uh, this right-of-way is comprised of 1,066 square feet. If vacated, a utility easement will not be maintained. The vacated right-of-way will be used for future development. Uh, the right-of-way north of here has previously been vacated. The petitioner has complied with our street vacation policy, and ec engineering recommends approval. Anyone in the audience want to speak to this item? Council? Move to approve, Brown. Second, Karski. Council Brown, thank you. Is made the motion to approve, seconded by Councilor Karski. If there's no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Council, any further uh, motions? Move to adjourn. Second, Anderson. Councilor Jamison, thank you. He has made that motion to adjourn tonight's City Council meeting, seconded by Councilor Anderson, Jr. If we could have a roll call vote, please. Council members Jamison? Yes. Karski? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Entman? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed 7 to 0. Uh, City of Sioux Falls, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you and make it a great, great day.